I'd like to call to order the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting of Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on the 14th of June at 2.30. Thank you, John. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. There are 23 supervisors present. Thank you. Approval of the May 21st, 2019 journal. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Is there a second? Please. <laughs> it usually works. <laughs> Supervisor Otten. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, approve, I, I would second that motion. <laughs> it's well received, Supervisor Otten. Thank you. Is, are there any questions or discussion? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Try again, Fran. Try again. There we go. The motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. And I mean thank you. Uh, consideration of appointments by the county administrator. To emergency medical services, reappointments. Shailen Edson, Stephen Cobb, Robert Kohanek, Alan Rubel, Randy Narbatovics, Steve Steinhardt, Daryl Kashabaski, Craig Schicker, Suzanne Martins, Thomas Barr. To local emergency planning committee, reappointments. Gregory Bierman, Thomas Barr, Philip Ditter, Peter Madden, Douglas Sherperiel and to the Traffic Safety Commission, reappointments, Ronald Becker, Terry Martin, Sergeant Terry Karam, and Joel Armansky. If there is any objection, if somebody wants a motion to accept all of them. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Testrudy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudy. Any questions or comments? Or anybody wants to split any of them? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. The motion's approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. We have none. Public addresses. Also none. Letters, communications, and announcements. We have none. I'm gonna be nice here. Uh, <laughs> County Administrator's Report. <laughs> he knew this was coming, that's why. He <laughs> Thank you for saving all that additional time for me, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> good evening. Good evening. It's, it's a good feel in the room this, this evening. I hope everyone's doing well. I want to touch on some very positive things that I think many of you may be aware of, but uh, these are... Uh, this is information that really, I think, recognizes what happens when we work together and when we help make good things happen in the community. So, for example, today, uh, Aaron Brault and I attended, just this morning in Milwaukee, the U.S.-Canada Great Lakes Public Forum. This is a 
forum that they have every three years is representation from all of the Great Lakes, so of course Wisconsin, Michigan, Canada, and others. I think there were about 125, 150 people there. And I was asked to give a little update about our Sheboygan River Harbor dredging project. And as you know, that really took place predominantly between 20, 2007 and was completed in 2013. So some time's gone by. But of course, the key question of the day was, well, what kind of impact has that had on the community? And of course, those of us who live here fully appreciate what a tremendous impact it has had on the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. We are no longer one of the dirtiest rivers and harbors in the country. It was a super fun site, as you know, dating back to 1986. It is no longer the black eye of our community. In fact, it's a river and harbor that we now celebrate, that's been cleaned up, that was dredged to the extent that we could have filled Lambeau Field to the 45th row. We leveraged over $100 million of city, county, state, and federal funds, as well as private sector funds to get it done. And that cleanup now has not only contributed to cleaner water, to new wildlife habitat and restoration, to more boat landings and recreational areas for kayaking, fishing, windsurfing, uh, you name it. But we also now, in the last two years alone, either directly along this corridor or very near it, within, a, within a, a throwing a rock distance, we have over $50 million in economic development that's occurred along the Sheboygan River and Harbor in just the last two years. If you look at the last three, four years, it's over $60 million. Some of that may have happened, but frankly, candidly, it's pretty difficult to encourage people to make multi-million dollar investments right along a river that's a Superfund site and, con and considered one of the dirtiest and unhealthiest in the country and where you have fish consumption signs up and, and uh, that kind of perception. So a tremendous success story. And I joined uh, five or six other uh, community representatives who talked about what it meant to their community. And Aaron Brault and I went down. It was a good chance for us to catch up. And he, of course, we, we both knew a number of people in the audience. But uh, you know, I was feeling really good about the fact that we leveraged $100 million and $60 million of economic development just in the next two years. Our tourism, I think, has gone up 14%. We're, we're seeing uh, more charter fishing and other activity. We're building a visitor center at one of the small posted stamps where we used to do the dewatering. You know, we walked through all this. And then, of course, when someone from Toronto got up there, they talked about a $600 million cleanup. And, you know, of course, it's all relative, but a very positive reflection. And uh, the people involved with it at the EPA and the DNR, uh, some of them approached us after the meeting and, and said how much they really appreciated working with Sheboygan County and working with people in this community. So it reflects well on us. And, of course, if it wasn't for the Sheboygan County Board, and our planning and conservation department and key stakeholders in this community, it would not have happened. Sheboygan County was the first to create the local work group to bring all these entities together. Sheboygan and the city of Sheboygan both put $250,000 on the table as seed money, and that grew to over $107 million. That is remarkable. Um, speaking of, of good news and recognition, uh, we just received notice that the Wisconsin Policy Forum uh, it has selected Sheboygan County to be the recipient of the 2019 award for an innovative approach to problem solving for our Amsterdam Dunes Preservation Area and Wetland Mitigation Bank. So next week, uh, Chairman Wagner, myself, Supervisor Distruti, and Aaron Brault are going to go to Milwaukee to accept this award. And we were selected for the statewide recognition because once again, it's a project that uh, was a tremendous leap of faith by the county board. You unanimously allocated $4.2 million of fund balance to purchase this property, which is highly unusual. It wasn't in our five-year capital plan. It was an opportunity that we seized. Uh, you did that, the board did that, with the, with the hope 
that we would ultimately recoup those dollars. And since then, as you recall, we have received the largest state DNR stewardship grant ever provided. We, we received natural resource damage assessment funds. We sold one of the lots. And at this point, we have fully recouped the $4.2 million. And we will have more revenue coming. When I say fully recouped, we have uh, payments coming from Tecumseh, as you recall. So that's not in hand yet, but we've covered the full $4.2 million. We will have additional dollars coming when the mitigation bank has been approved by the Department of Natural Resources. And depending on what the county board establishes as a fee structure, as you recall, every time we had to extend an airport runway or widen a county road or a town road and impact wetlands, we either needed to create a new wetland mitigation bank, which is obviously very difficult to do, or, and we didn't have one, or purchase credits in another county like Ashland for hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the beauty of the Amsterdam Dune Preservation Area and Wetland Mitigation Bank is going forward, not only will the county but other municipalities and the private sector, when, if and when they have to impact in a wetland, which you don't want to do, but if you have to, uh, we will have our own wetland mitigation bank. We can sell those credits and those dollars will further not only enhance the property, but become part of the county coffers for other good work. So we're going to be the recipient of this war award. And uh, two weeks ago, uh, Roger Destrudy and I went down to Amsterdam Dunes. And Roger, as you know, was chairman of the county board when this opportunity was present. Uh, the board, again, the community was very supportive. And I appreciated Roger being interviewed and, and sharing some history about the property. Uh, it's, it's, it's an accomplishment that I hope everyone on the board and our community takes pride in. It's a special place. And it wouldn't have happened if the county board didn't authorize that purchase. We have a Sheboygan County Legislative Breakfast once a month. We, we periodically cancel them or don't hold them depending on the time of the year, but it's, it's unique to Sheboygan County. Not, most counties don't have a, a routine legislative breakfast, and many of you participate. And we're very fortunate to have excellent rapport with our elected officials. In fact, since Senator Lemieux used to sit in these very chairs, and Terry Kotzma was also on a, uh, a local government, and, and uh, well-respected uh, leader in the community. So we have two representatives that we know well on the Joint Finance Committee. And I, as you know, I've been around now 21 years in this position. Some of you have been on the board almost twice that long. And whenever the state budget comes forward, you know, you kind of hold your breath a little bit. Is it going to be helpful? Is it going to be hurtful? Are we going to see more pressure on us to fill unfunded mandates? Will we be able to address needs? And uh, in my opinion, this is one of the kindest, um, one of the best uh, proposed budgets that I've seen first come from Governor Evers. And it wasn't perfect, but it had a lot of good things in there for county government. And now the Joint Finance Committee has reviewed it, made their decisions. It's now their budget that they have submitted back to Governor Evers. And I think it's one of the best budgets we've seen come out of the Joint Finance Committee in a long time. And I really credit Senator Lemieux and Representative Kotzma for their leadership. And your input, not only during the legislative breakfast, but you recall we kind of had that special meeting where we focused on child welfare crisis as our number one priority. And then we followed up with seven budget issue papers. Now, when you have a $145 million budget implementing over 207 programs and services, it's tough to boil that down to seven key priorities. But that's what we did. And some of you might be wondering, well, now that this work's done, how did we do? How did they respond to our information? Children and family aids. The governor was proposing a $15 million increase statewide for the children and family aids crisis. Wonderful initiative. The Joint Finance Committee allocated $25.5 million, more than the governor proposed for our children and family aides. Wonderful news. And again, that will be distributed countywide, so Sheboygan will see a piece of that. But uh, that was a strong yes 
when it came to a positive response to our budget issue paper and obviously the good work of the Wisconsin Counties Association and all the other counties that weighed in on that. State district attorney funding was the other number two on our, our budget issue papers. As you recall, we are in <coughs> dire need of more district attorneys. And in fact, this county board is one of the few counties in the state who's actually put more county property tax levy to support now 1.5 of our district attorneys. These are state positions, but we stepped up because the need was so great. Uh, the Joint Finance Committee supported a two and a half to three million dollar increase for 34 positions, which will provide any of the, another half position for Sheboygan County. So a strong yes to our budget issue paper in reacting favorably to supporting uh, the governor's proposal as well as the Joint Finance Committee supporting it. Court appointed attorney compensation. This one's a little maddening, isn't it? The state public defender rate was $40 per hour, the lowest in the nation. Wow. We obviously weren't keeping up with that. And that has implications for our judicial system and the number of people that are sitting in our detention center waiting to get the representation they need. It's not cost effective. It might feel good to say you're only going to pay a public defender $40 an hour, but we couldn't find folks to do it. So the governor proposed an increase of up to 70 per hour, and the uh, Supreme Court wanted it to be $100 an hour. The Joint Finance Committee also supported raising it from $40 to $70 an hour, and also built in another $5 million to counties in those situations where they do have to pay the $100. So a strong yes, a favorable re response from the Joint Finance Committee on this budget issue paper. Support local control and adjust statutory property tax levy limit. I don't think most of us were holding our breath on this. The governor had proposed uh, making it a little bit more flexible that it could be net new construction or up to 2%, up to 2%, which still wouldn't be sufficient to cover our wage and benefit increases alone. Personally, uh, our county board, we felt it was a reasonable adjustment. The Joint Finance Committee did not support that. So the current caps remain. One of the things I heard from uh, our Wisconsin Counties Association representation, I, th I think Kyle may have mentioned that at our leadership forum, but if he didn't, he shared it with me that there, there was some reluctance. I, I think there are increasing more legislators who recognize that that net new construction cap can't continue in perpetuity, not at a half or 1%, it's not enough. It's not sufficient, and it has nothing to do with the programs and services we have to provide. But there was some reluctance on the Joint Finance Committee to make that change. So that was a no. Underfunded state mandated programs, as you know, to the tune of about 10, 13 million dollars a year, we support unfunded or underfunded mandated programs at Health and Human Services alone. And one of the things that helps offset that is state shared revenue. State shared revenue hasn't been increased in over a decade. In fact, it's been reduced in 2004, 2010, and 2012. The governor proposed a 2% increase in state shared revenue. The Joint Finance Committee said no, no action there. And then finally, the last two were a nursing home rate increase and transportation funding. Now, a nursing home rate increase is challenging to get attention at the state level because about 33 of 72 counties own and operate a nursing home. So we're not a majority. And of course, they need legislators from across the state to support making an adjustment here. But as you know, in 2016 alone, 27 skilled nursing home facilities closed across the state. As you know, Rocky Knoll continues to subsidize at a higher and higher level the cost of administering uh, our services there because Medicaid doesn't cover the cost. It simply doesn't, and it hasn't been adequate, and it's been woefully underfunded for years. The governor proposed an $8.7 million increase in fiscal year 2020 and a $17.8 million fiscal increase in fiscal year 2021. It would, it would have been about a two and a half percent increase. Step in the right direction. Our joint finance committee 
supported a $37 million increase for Medicaid reimbursement. Three times as much as the governor. This is a big win for Sheboygan County, for our nursing homes across the state, and certainly our beloved Rocky Knoll. So that's wonderful news. And then, as I said, the last one, transportation. We've certainly seen some good progress made there in Sheboygan County with our half percent sales tax and the good work that Greg and his team are doing. Uh, the governor had proposed a 10% general transportation aid increase. The Joint Finance Committee supported that. So most of our budget issue papers, most of the priorities that we established and shared with our legislators, in, in particular, Terry and Devin, uh, we saw positive traction, we saw improvement, and that's fantastic. So next time you see them at legislative breakfast or Fleet Farm or wherever you might run into them, uh, please say thank you because they stepped up for us. And it's encouraging and it was much needed. Finally, tonight you're going to be asked to take action on a, a couple of resolutions and just wanted to set the stage. The first is on the designation of the U.S. Customs Facility as a user fee airport. Just want to refresh everyone's memory. The county board's already taken action to support building a U.S. Customs Facility and Welcome Center. That decision's been made. And right now in the five-year plan, we have $5.5 million set aside for that, though the cost is coming in closer to 3.7 to 3.9 million. So we hope to exceed expectations there. Two and a half million dollars is a grant from the state to cover that cost. So we're looking good. What this resolution asks of you is do, does the county board support Kohler Company covering the wage and benefits for the staff that have to operate it? All right, so we've discussed this in the past. Kohler Company has offered to cover the operational costs for this customs facility. We have a proposed agreement in place. Uh, Crystal's been doing a nice job working on that. We've had discussions for months, frankly, with the Kohler company on this. I had a call today from a Kohler company VP that's involved. She was very upbeat about uh, the, them proceeding with that. It's looking good. So what's being asked of you today are two things. One, do you support the Kohler company covering the cost of operating the customs facility? I presume the answer is yes, because we certainly don't want to pick that up with property tax levy. And then the second question is, do you support this being a user fee facility? So going forward, as other entities use it, such as Johnsonville, Bemis, other companies in the community that would want to use this facility, what, do you support them paying a user fee to offset those costs again so it isn't put on the shoulders of property taxpayers? So that's what's being asked of you there. And then finally, a little out of the ordinary, but there was a letter from Jim Tabeast and Property Committee Chair Steve Bauer asking you to pull the resolution supporting the sale of a sliver of property for Lutheran High School. As many of you may know, they're looking to do some remodeling and add an addition there. We've had discussions for actually too long on this because we have a very consistent approach in this, in this county. We asked for the appraised value. We did that when we sold transportation property land, the old highway facilities, the land at Amsterdam Dunes, we say appraised value. Why? It's fair to the taxpayer, and we're not showing any favoritism for one entity or another. So we had a couple of appraisals done on this. It came to $6,000. So tonight you're being asked to pull this document to approve that sale so they can proceed with building now rather than having to wait another four weeks. And I know they would certainly appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Consideration of committee reports, executive committee. Resolution number two regarding designating the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport as a U.S. Customs Service user fee airport and entering into an agreement with Kohler Company for funding. Committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to adopt resolution number three. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I support. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, continuing with executive committee reports. 
Resolution number three regarding approving corporate partnership program with Concordia University. Committee recommendation to ad adopt as amended. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to enact ordinance number two. As amended, correct? Correct. Thank you. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Any questions? <coughs> Excuse me. Any questions or comments? Supervisor Baumgart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I have no problem with Concordia developing a partnership, but uh, we have uh, uh, Lakeland uh, University and Silver Lake. Um, I, I'm just curious why um, the uh, uh, Concordia College has come in and uh, uh, dazzled us when our other hometown uh, universities uh, are left behind. I think this is an addition, as I understand, we have Lakeland College already on board with this. So we're just looking to give more opportunities to our employees if they choose to go there. Is that fair, Gene? Thank you. Any other questions? Supervisor Glavin. Uh, as a matter of a correction, this is resolution number three. Right. Right. Bill said two, I think he'll, he'll, he'll correct that. Thank you. Seeing no other lights, all those in favor say aye or nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Ordinance number two. Regarding changing supervisory district boundaries to reflect annexation, City of Plymouth, recommendation to enact. Supervisor Baumgart. Or maybe your light was on from previous, I'm sorry. Supervisor Damp. I move to enact ordinance number two. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any questions or comments? Supervisor Hoffman, do you have a, a question? Yeah, I would. Uh, Go ahead. After the census, which is coming up soon, won't these be adjusted again? I know there will be adjustments after the census, but I think this was required by the city of Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying, and these will be incorporated? Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. I guess I must have answered it right. <laughs> I'm trying not to be shocked here. <laughs> Thank you. No, no problem with the question. Okay, seeing no more lights, all those in favor say aye. Those opposed, nay. This is my district, by the way. <laughs> let's, let's be honest here. <laughs> I've had a lot of them lately. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, motion passes. Okay, uh, committee report. 2018-2019 per diem payments. This is just something that we need a, every year. We do annually, and I need a motion to accept the report. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Damp. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Any questions or comments? Supervisor OJ. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to point out for anyone in the public who actually looks at this, total meetings is total meetings they were paid for, not necessarily the total meetings they attended. That is correct. Thank you for that information. Anybody else? Seeing no lights, please push your A or nay, or nay on acceptance. Supervisor OJ, gonna re-push. Yeah. Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Turn the gavel over to the vice chair. 
Resolutions introduced. Resolution number four from the property committee regarding authorizing sale of Lutheran High property. Pursuant to Rule 13, it is anticipated that a motion to withdraw this proposed resolution will be made. If a, by a majority vote, the board votes to pull the resolution, it will be subject to immediate action. Supervisor Nelson. Uh, thank you, Vice Chairman Koch. Uh, pursuant to Rule 8, uh, uh, I move to, uh, to uh, approve the resolution to pull, the, uh, to pull it. You're wishing subject to, to immediate action. Okay. You wishing to pull a resolution? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Supervisor OJ? I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor OJ. At this time, I believe we'll be voting on pulling the resolution. Mm -hmm. right. Please vote. Motion approved is uh, unanimous. Okay, the motion is pulled for immediate action. So is there a motion on resolution number four? Supervisor OJ. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I move to approve resolution number four. Thank you, Supervisor OJ. Supervisor Nelson. Uh, thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, I second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Nelson. Is there any discussion? Supervisor Baumgart. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, well, this less than one, one acre of land is, is uh, uh, certainly a, uh, a good thing so that the uh, Lucerne High School can expand. Uh, but my concern has been a little bit about why the engineering and drafting uh, didn't take this um, into consideration ahead of time and maybe uh, develop a, a plan that didn't require the uh, uh, almost acre, or the, the, the fact that uh, um, there's obviously some lack of, of discussion because now we're, we'll be asking to uh, uh, pull the uh, motion which, which we're, and vote on it, uh, making that so that they can start their construction earlier. Um, I just wonder if it wasn't a problem with the county not discussing it with the Lucent High School in, in uh, detail or the Lucent High School people uh, were just slow and moving and not having their ducks in order so that this uh, wasn't a necessarily a, uh, an issue that they needed to take the acre or that they needed to uh, uh, move on quickly at the end so they could do construction. So I, I just feel that what there, there was some lack of communication somewhere along the line. Thank you, Supervisor Walker. I was just attending the property committee meeting this evening uh, prior to this meeting. We talked a little bit about the history, and another representative from Lutheran High said, you know, this discussion actually dates back to Jack Van Dixhorn. He said that there was discussion about the possibility of this building, and I think Jack may have had discussions with the property committee about whether we could just give them this property or sell it for a dollar. <laughs> And ultimately, you know, we chose to be consistent and go with the appraised value, so we're not showing any favoritism to anyone. So it, it, I think it took longer than it needed to before we just locked into an approach, and, and once we did, we got it done. But to your point of due diligence, I mean, I, I think of this as any building project. You know, how often have we built a home or built a facility 50, 100 years ago, and you can't anticipate every area of growth or the, or the need for the facility. So as I understand it, they have just a, an incredible addition in mind, a remod, some remodeling in mind. And the sliver of land is right behind Lutheran High, right at the base of that hill. It's property that Jim Tabeast and others have looked at. We would not use it for any purpose. I mean, it is literally right behind their building and then it goes along their property line out to the road in, in the shape of a sliver. So. Uh, I think it's a good thing for Lutheran High. I imagine they could have changed their building plans to have the setback necessary that wouldn't require the sale, but uh, I think it's a good thing. I'm glad that we can be helpful. Thank you, Administrator Payne. Supervisor OJ. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, yeah, we've been talking with them for months, and as everyone here knows, it's, it's a pain because the committee that has to do the dealing with them isn't the ones who actually can say, yes, we can sell it to you. 
So yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that has to go back and forth and for several months we did um, until eventually we, we reached an agreement and there, at this point there's no reason to make them wait another month to start building. Um, I do have one question. Now, after having to take a couple of votes today to take money out of contingency funds for things, where's the $6,000 going? That's a commission that goes directly to the county board chairman. <laughs> what did I do? No. That, that will fall to the general fund. I like the question. It was the answer. No. <laughs> Are there any further discussion? Okay, then we can vote. That motion is approved unanimously. Resolution number five from the executive committee. Regarding authorizing creation of joint county library planning committee. Resolution number five will be sent to the finance committee. Resolution number six from the finance committee. Regarding approving standard intergovernmental agreement for 2020 county sales tax revenue sharing. Resolution number six will be sent to the executive committee. There are no ordinances introduced. The next item of business is adjourned. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Please vote. I just hope Adam, uh, Emmett doesn't take this literally. We are adjourned. I trust him.